Give me a countdown to record. Yes, let's go. All right. I'm Enchantress Shane. This is Om Rupani, and we are Hello. here. Oh, yes. Hello. I'm so excited. Um, we are teaching a course called Nice Guy Rehab. And yeah, we're here to, to talk about what you may be experiencing and um, and hopefully give you some hope that this isn't the way you have to be forever. So we're going to share about nice guys who sell themselves short or too cheap and you settle for less. What do you have to well, say? We're doing this series specifically on why nice guys don't get the sex they want. Oh, yeah. We want yeah. to be blunt about it. And we are yeah. kind of starting in the deep end because quite frankly, that is your core problem. So nice guys are already too much in shadow about their desires, about asking for what they want, about trying to camouflage why they are there in the first place. And I'm like, that actually is not good. It isn't particularly masculine. It doesn't actually earn you any extra kudos. So point number two on why nice guys actually don't get the sex they want is they are constantly selling themselves too cheap. You're settling for less. And I would think I would say part of settling for less is you actually are not open about the fact that you, you want sex. That's why you're there. That's why you're pursuing a woman. That's why you're talking to her. That's why you're being nice to her. That's why you're engaging with her. You have desire. You have desire and you're looking for her to reciprocate that desire. That's what you're there for. You want to hide it someplace. A nice guy does not feel comfortable putting that up front. He wants to hide it under the rug. He wants to say, oh, no, I'm not that guy. I'm just being nice to you. And all that ends up doing is creating a creepy vibe. Because let me know why you're there. Not being open about it, not being blunt about it, it kind of, actually, that's point number three. Point number two, the shadowy part, we will talk about in point number three. Point number two would be, you keep settling for less. Right? You keep accepting less. You keep hanging around and taking crumbs. And what ends up happening is you attract women who like to breadcrumb men. If you accept less, you will attract women who will say, I'll take advantage of this guy. I will, I will give him a tiny, a little pat on the head, a little hug, a little bro hug. Give him a compliment. Be nice to him if, if that's enough to keep him around and send him on his way. And you say, oh, she gave me a little something. Maybe she'll give me a little something next time, more little next time. And uh, bad strategy. Yeah. And, and you're just, you're giving me this imagery of, you know, you drop off the groceries, you get this hug. And as you walk away, you're like, ah, oh, I'm such a good guy. You know, I did a mitzvah. I did something so nice. And you make yourself really available. And there is a fear that if you say no, or you can't do it, that she'll drop you. And it's a really bad habit. So if you're going to the airport every time to pick someone up, and one time she asks you, and you feel like you have things going on in your life and it's inconvenient, but you're afraid to say no because you're afraid you'll lose her or she'll call somebody else. And the truth is a lot of these women are not users, but it's the pattern that's created. Whereas the only way you are connected is by being of service and giving and giving and giving and you're over giving past the point of what you're receiving. And so that's where, and just to speak to the third point a little bit is, you know, there's some resentment that starts. And so that is not comfortable at all. So usually you'll over laugh or you'll over be silly or maybe some kind of sexual innuendo sneaks out just so you can say like, hey, I'm not gay. I really, but actually that feels that to speak to the creepiness factor, it's like if you're again, trying- we're jumping ahead. Let's save the creepiness for the next. <laughs> okay, I can't help it. It's the worst thing. We can't help it because they 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 weave into each other. But, yeah. Uh, okay, I'll make this point. So this is okay. something I've observed. Yeah. You know, if you keep selling yourself cheap, people will think you're cheap. Yeah. If you keep doing things and keep offering and keep overextending and keep pouring out without asking for anything in return, what mm -hmm. you're indicating is I'm not really worth anything. Yeah. That little pat on the head you gave me, that little bro hug you gave me, that's enough for me. I'm not really worth more. You are setting your own price on the marketplace and you're setting it too low. And when you set it too low, guess what happens? You become less attractive. 
the less you're willing to accept, the more you're willing to overextend yourself, you actually diminish in that woman's eyes because she it's very logical for her to assume this guy isn't really worth all that much. If he was, why would he be accepting such a low price from me? Right? Yes. So yes. you are shooting yourself in the foot, but you think extra niceness is eventually going to pay off and all that extra niceness is doing is lowering your value more and more and more and more. Because why would anybody pay more for you when you're willing to sell yourself that cheap? Hmm. Really? Why should anybody give more to you if you're happy with less? Right. So the question is, why are you happy with less? And when has this strategy really worked out for you? That you've tried to sell yourself for so cheap and finally people have like said, oh my God, what a great bargain. Have they not continued to devalue what you bring? Like you get even less and less appreciation as time goes by rather than more and more desire. Right. And that that taking advantage is leads you down the road of blaming women. And so part of what this course is here to do is to raise your self-worth and raise your standards. Like what does it mean to be connected to you? And this doesn't mean you're going to have sex with everyone. Like it is valuable to have strong emotional relationships with some women, but if that's why you're there, if this is a good friend, but if you're not having sex or intimacy in your life, um, you're not living fully. And there's a part of you that is that is mad and angry and feels left out. Um, and you might not even realize it or you realize it. You're like, no, everything's fine. And you put on this facade of like, no, it's I feel OK. All in divine timing. You know, when I meet the right person, it, I, I'll know. And and the truth is, you might be experiencing drama. A lot of times these women that you are attracting are women that are very drama, very dramatic. Either they're over drinking or they're needy for someone to take care of them. So for you to find a goddess, a woman who is sovereign, that means you have to be sovereign and not just a caregiver. So all the women that are needing all this care, they are, there's something missing in them. And if you're emotionally available and you're self-aware, at least to be on this video, you deserve a woman who can show up and be whole as opposed to a woman who has big gaping wounds that need tending to like a child. So if you're picking her up off the floor or you're, you know, she's stuck and she has no one to babysit her kid and now she's throwing a fit and you show up. It creates that pattern of you are the savior, but you're not getting anything for it. Right. And again, bringing in that eternal hope. And let's not uh, skip over the most obvious, most blatant, most uh, common uh, way the nice guy is overextending himself these days, which is outright giving money to women. Oh, yeah. I know plenty of guys who are giving away their Paying savings, rent, hard-earned yeah. money yeah. to women. And again, thinking certainly this will be rewarded down the line. Certainly this will be appreciated down the line. And amazingly, it doesn't. Why? Because once again, you are overextending yourself and you're giving away a lot for nothing in return. And you have put yourself in that rut, right? You're yeah. selling yourself too cheap hoping that somehow it's going to magically pay off, but it doesn't. It, it actually causes the other person to lose respect for you. They assume you are not worth that much. Why else would you be overextending yourself this much? Why would you be giving so much without willing, without uh, demanding or asserting that this be a reciprocal relationship? And, you know, I, what I want to say is like, as you say that, oh, I'm like my heart hurt, you know, like I feel the pain that you're all in. And a lot of my clients have these experiences and really rationalize about why it's okay. No, it's okay. She has a kid and a family and she has no one else to turn to, but that right. actually doesn't mean that you have to be the one, you know? And so this is a lot about boundaries, but you can still be kind. We're not here teaching you be an asshole but you be a human and you respect and honor yourself. And then you will start attracting different caliber of women. Yeah. The prompt here isn't that you should not give to a woman, that you should not extend yourself to a woman. The prompt is, what are you getting in return? Hmm. Are you actually creating a reciprocal relationship 
Or are you just giving away everything you have uh, in the hope that someday it will be returned and it never seems to come back to you? And if you are in that, why do you keep putting yourself in that place? That's a really deep conversation to have. Yeah. Why do you keep overextending yourself? And I would say it outright. I have plenty of men who come to me with this scenario. They're literally giving away the bank. I'm not talking about doing favors and, and walking the groceries home. That can be, you know, kind of cute and old fashioned. I'm talking about men, basically. Paying rent. Like money, paying- money, 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 going out and nothing much coming back. And yeah. I'm like, you, and if you engage in this, you are setting yourself to attract users. And this right. is a, this is a match made in hell. Right. The naive guy, the nice guy and the hustling woman. Right. Right. And then you certainly are not going to get anything back because the women you're attracting are looking for suckers like you. And now you're really stuck in a rut. You've really found each other, right? And it's really not a good picture. It's not a good thing. It leads to a lot of burnout and resentment and anger in men over time and a lot of frustration and still not really getting the result you want, which is the intimacy, the sex, that and uh, connection that you want from feminine yeah i want to just exchange uh, for everything that you bring yes exchange right and so i just want to i love the word reciprocal because it's not transactional it's like there has to be energy flowing back and forth in a way that feels good that feels nourishing and that's sustainable Right. So that means after you've delivered your groceries and you walk away, you're not getting anxiety about like, I hope she calls me next or you don't feel trapped and and like stuck in this little hamster wheel. But it's about actually using tools to efficiently find out what is this relationship? And if you're interested in this woman intimately and sexually and she's not, wouldn't that be nice to know before your bank account is drained? You know, not everybody's a good fit for everybody, but there's ways and tools and ways to speak where you can find that out and let someone know of your your desires and not be a weirdo, not be a creep, but be upfront and also be respectful. Right. Okay. I think that's good for today. That's good for now. So again, we're inviting you to the nice guy rehab. We are here to, we want you to get results. Like we want you to have experiences and when I tell the women in my women's groups, um, oh, this is what we're teaching, they're like, oh, good, send them my way. Like women are wanting you, especially because if you're nice and then you can add on, you know, the the primal masculine, it's like you're great. Nice guys pay attention to detail as far as I see. What a great lover. So sign up for this course. We're really excited to give you our goodies. And um, yeah, see you then. And see you in the next part of this video series. Wonderful. Yeah, see you soon.